Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to host a fireside chat with Jonathan Lewis, who is head of digital and partnership innovation at Channel 4. We're going to discuss the very latest viewing and trading trends at Channel 4 in light of consumers being stuck indoors and what this means to advertisers. Now, we're going to kick off straight away. Jonathan, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I understand connected TV viewing at Channel 4, which is obviously a very huge, it's a hugely popular topic around the world, has jumped significantly uh, in replacement of mobile uh, mobile device viewing. So if you can just tell us a little what is happening there and, and also sort of explain whether this makes any difference to advertisers. Are they happy to see this shift from a smaller screen to the bigger screen in the household? Well, hello, Justin. Thanks for inviting me. Um, yeah, I suppose in answer to uh, your question around uh, connected TV viewing, big or televod viewing as we call it, there's been a significant spike in growth um, in that area in terms of viewing on those devices. I mean, we saw we saw increases or we've seen increases um, over the last um, year or year and a half or so. So um, from a from a base of around about 50 percent, maybe a year ago, it's grown up to 65 percent of total VOD viewing. Um, but we've seen a specific spike over the course of the last few weeks in, in light of um, the kind of like sort of, I suppose, post lockdown phase where more people are going to the big screen to watch um, their content or their, their video on demand content on the biggest screen possible, um, uh, which is, I suppose, kind of kind of makes sense as a broadcaster. People want to watch um, their catch up on the biggest screen in the house. And if you're indoors all the time, you can't get out, then you're going to. Um, you're going to want to do that. Um, advertisers seem to be demanding a big screen more from, an, uh, from a kind of um, buying perspective. And also we're trying to uh, evolve our capability in terms of the ad formats that we develop on the big screen. So as part of the um, COVID lockdown crisis, we've, we've actually created a new product called Engage, which is a dynamic overlay allowing advertisers to change their creative dynamically and to deliver messages that might be supportive of um, certain initiatives or the NHS and stuff, which has been which has received great traction in the market. So to answer your question about do advertisers welcome big screen VOD viewing, I think the answer is yes from our perspective. So on that dynamic ad sort of capability or changing your creative, how quickly can they change their creative? So, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's functionality that we literally can do um, with a sort of 24 hour lead time. So um we can we 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 do the work at the back end it's it's, a, it's effectively um it's a frame that sits over the existing creative that we can manipulate and change for an advertiser um so yeah we've had a couple of clients so far that have utilized that particularly supermarket brands that want to support the nhs and uh, want to recognize uh, what's going on around the community so yeah it's worked really well that's really interesting so prior to this then connected tv um, consumption was growing anyway, but you've seen a massive bump now. And, and then now, do you think be because of this situation, those those sort of brands, if you like, that you all those apps and those devices, do you think this will you'll see that sort of loyalty bump after COVID? Is that what you're anticipating at Channel 4? Yeah, we're hoping we're hoping so. I mean, I, it's really difficult to predict, isn't it? What kind of consumer behavior is going to come out of this and how how both viewers and advertisers are going to react post COVID, but also how long we're going to be in this situation. Um, but there is a definite user behavior change shift going on in terms of people just watching telly, but also watching content on demand. I mean, you know, I could literally wax lyrical for 15 minutes about the records that are being broken on our linear screens on channel four at the moment. Um, Friday night viewing is going through the roof. We've had a record, uh, viewing on shows such as Friday Night Dinner and Gogglebox and um, Celebrity Celebrity SAS, it's just been incredible. So, how how that maintains over this period is and, and beyond is, is difficult to ascertain. Well, one of the um, sort of uh, nuggets, if you like, here of what's occurred is that you're you're also experiencing a bump in younger demos as well. Do you have a, a sort of understanding of how they are viewing content? compared to older generations like is there a, is there a clear difference and and does it really matter well there's been a shift there's been a massive swing from you could argue that younger viewers were moving away from tele television linear television um over the course of the last year or so 
And we've seen this huge swing back in April where um, viewing for 1634s on Channel 4, something like 30, just over 30% in April versus um, a growth of around about 10% of total commercial viewing on TV. Um, we also get a sense that young and old viewers um, are looking for somewhere they can trust, an environment that they feel comfortable in. Um, and, you know, they're sort of leaning towards broadcast services and also um, catch up and on demand services. The other thing I'd say just from a Channel 4 perspective is sort of the kind of nature of our content and the type of stuff we have on our platform. So we've got the biggest archive um, of any of the other any of the other broadcasters. We've got over 15,000 hours of archive content, uh, number one. But that content is also um, predominantly speckled with um, numerous comedies be they new comment, new series and old. So this archive of in-betweeners, which, you know, we're looking at it the other day, you know, that was filmed over 10 years ago, is having a resurgence. Father Ted, um, obviously Friday night dinner. So we're seeing young audiences come back in droves and engage on, on all four as a platform more than they've ever done. Well, that's interesting because I think on platforms like the big SVODs, friends and program old programs like that still remains the number one sort of stream program doesn't it still to this day and it's probably around 30 years old so look you mentioned it you touched on it a bit because all your connected tv apps and experiences are, are based around broadcaster vod or bvod and according to you guys bvod is very valuable inventory to advertisers why is that the case yeah i mean i mean i've, I've been i've been heard saying this a number of times before but I think there's this element of brand safety, um, viewability, view, ads viewed to completion, um, but also the kind of big screen impact of watching ads um, on the big screen rather than on a five centimeter square mobile device, which all kind of add the sort of um, attractiveness of, of broadcast of odd. And then you overlay that with, you know, the dynamic advertising formats that we can serve and also the additional um, audience targeting that Channel 4 can offer, be that demographic targeting or also interest-based targeting, and also some of the new products that we're really excited about announcing, uh, which we're doing over the course of the next few days. So I think you couple all of those things together, broadcast of odd, arguably, arguably now has never been more compelling, um, particularly in this kind of like current sort of lockdown COVID crisis that we're in. Do you think under, uh, do you think advertisers understand that and understand, understand those sort of benefits? Because they often um, sort of criticise the price difference between BVOD and uh, versus linear. And I know lots of broadcasters around the world struggle to sell their uh, BVOD inventory. Like, do you experience that? Do you think advertisers really understand the benefits of a sort of premium content delivered in a managed way over these networks? I hope so. I mean, we do a lot of we do a lot of research and pu have published a lot of research on this on this particular um, topic. Uh, we published some research in association with Thinkbox, Sky, and ITV called "The Bigger Picture" around the value of broadcast of VOD. Got almost two years ago now. Um, I mean, the other thing we've not talked about is the is the the multiple viewing factor, which was one of the elements that came out of the bigger picture, um, where we we noticed that. There's a viewing factor of 1.6 for all broadcast VOD campaigns. So, obviously, more than one person in a room watching watching a big screen uh, video on demand app on a Samsung TV, for example, which obviously we don't charge for. So, again, I think that that is filtering through, um, mm. particularly to media agencies. Probably less so, maybe to clients, but that's the job that we continue to um do is try and get that message out there and that's why things like this are quite helpful <laughs> yeah and, and just to be clear you you sell based on a single impression on a broadcast stream on a yeah, on certainly. a bvod stream but yet the statistics suggest that um the likelihood is that there'll be an extra half person watching them on average or 0.6 or whatever yeah 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 okay. and that was that was that was research done a while ago so i mean as factoring the comment we made at the very start of this discussion obviously that's grown significantly in the last two years so obviously that factor will grow as well so one of the areas that have, that have interested me is that around connected tv viewing is this sort of move the shift to automated buying um buying audiences across you know lots of different providers that's uh, that's on demand so how much how much value do advertisers advertisers place 
on context if they can buy audiences in this in this fashion and does it really matter um to a brand if all if these audiences are gathered under v a variety of broadcaster brands like does that does that make a difference to um to advertisers today so 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 two questions there there's an aggregation aggregation question but there's also specifically a context question and where the advertising is placed within a particular program um or environment shall i say and i think we you we know we're you know, we, we feel very strongly that context is increasing, increasingly more, almost more important than ever, as well as ensuring you're targeting the right ad. Um, and we talk about, um, you know, very much about the brand rub effect, you know, about uh, uh, showing that advertising is placed in, in the right environment because then the advertiser's message is um, receives the, you know, the, the, the right attributes or the same attributes as that particular media host, be that being that what we would see as a premium broadcaster, which is often called, I think, the presenter effects and, and different attributes will come from wherever that media um, host sits within the sort of value chain. So I think um, I, we think context is incredibly important. Marrying context and audiences together is arguably, from my perspective, the Holy Grail. Your second question is a more deeper, wider, wider um, question around the aggregation of premium VOD services all under one banner, and be that an AVOD or um, AVOD and SVOD play. Obviously, we've started that in the UK in the in the, in the SVOD marketplace. So we we announced recently um, us joining BritBox, which was announced a couple of weeks ago, which is you know, obviously you know, the the SVOD launch. Um, in the UK, which happened a while ago, which is ITV and BBC getting together. Um, will, will things move forward to an aggregation player of AVOD? Well, that's a very, very tricky, challenging, probably more political debate to be had. Um, and will, you, will view, viewers benefit from an aggregated AVOD play? Potentially, yes, I would say, in competition with, with all the big SVODs such as Netflix and the emergence of Disney Plus, but it's a very challenging thing to to bring together, I think. But what about Channel 4's position on joining forces in a sort of automated buying platform with trading desks, etc., so clients can buy audiences across, you know, a harmonised data set, if you like, and it doesn't matter mm. where, that broad, where that content comes from. Does that devalue uh, Channel 4's sort of position in the market if you're just selling audiences on that basis? Are you worried about things? I think there's, I think there's two things. I think there's definitely an opportunity to aggregate um, data and also have a consistent currency in terms of how we sell to the market. And I think that may be arguably one of the things that comes out of um, this crisis over the next few months is there may be a more of a coming together from the major broadcasters to ensure that there's a there's a common currency. I mean that would that would be the most easiest, probably frictionless first step in some form of coming together of, of, of broadcasters. I suppose the next step then is, is, is a kind of like an aggregated buying point. Um, I, I see that as probably more complex um, to deliver in the kind of like medium term. Um, and then there's full blown sort of player aggregation. But I think, you know, the coming together of data in a consistent currency, I think is logical from, from, anyone, from anyone you talk to on my side of the fence. It's just making it happen. Yes, well, actually, so that, that was a question I was going to ask you. Do you think this crisis um, will push broadcasters to partner up better and collaborate in areas that they've struggled with in the past? Just do you think that's going to help that situation? I think, I think we've, all, we've all had to think differently in terms of how we schedule content, create content, also how, what, what opportunities we're putting into the market to stimulate interest from advertisers. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, do we are we being forced to think differently at the moment within our own within within our own markets within our own businesses? Yes, we are. Will that filter out in terms of think, thinking differently um, and being more open to greater collaboration in the future? From a personal perspective, this is not my business talking. I think we probably will open up conversation. Okay, so um, what are what are the next steps? in terms of advertising on all four sort of um, developments that will help help marketers achieve their objective because i believe before uh, the coronavirus hit you were on the verge of giving advertisers the ability to bring their own data and match it to c4's uh, own first party data is is that still the case 
Yeah, so it's been something we've been working on for about the last 12 months. And unfortunately, you know, something we were going to probably we would have announced by now um, to the market at some big sort of sort of trade event. But yeah, we've been working uh, um, to um, well, leverage Channel 4's valuable first party data. So we've got 23 million users um, and enable clients to be able to match their own data against all four data in a secure GDPR compliant way um, and buy against those data sets on all four. Um, so being able to append a match to um, all four users. And we can do this because we've got such a big scaled um, bucket of audience data. So, so the hero product, which we're announcing this week is called Brand Match. So that's a, that's a bring your own data client proposition. So clients with first party data can come to us. We're working with two partners. We're working with InfoSum um, who do the matching and a company called Media Rhythmics who are able to do the, um, the modeling and deliver the scale to that match to be able to buy um, those client segments effectively across all four um, platforms. So we've got about half a dozen clients we're testing with at the moment, and we're making that announcement this week. So that's really exciting. And there's two sister products that sit alongside that. Um, one is called Approved, which is a partnership with Axiom. So if you're a client that doesn't own first party data, but are buying um, segments on the Axiom platform, be they bespoke segments or off the shelf segments, you'll be able to buy those match segments on all four. Um, from the end of the month. Um, and then we've got a bespoke product, which is mixing um, all of the different um, insight that we have across all of our data sets, be that platform usage behavior, viewing behavior um, against content, and also audience um, behavior, and to offer a more granular targeted sell against historical information that we have of activity on the all four um, platforms. So they're the three uh, products that we're taking to market this week. Again, hopefully to, to stimulate interest from advertisers that some of which have, have deferred campaign in the live, campaigns in the live months we've seen across April and May. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm really glad that you're still able to roll that out. And uh, perhaps the next time we'll chat, we'll have a look at uh, some case studies of how this has improved their sort of outcomes based and sort of more performance based marketing around TV. That sounds really interesting. And then, and then finally, with all with with all these sort of uh, issues and uh, you know uh, economic setbacks, there's always pockets of opportunities uh, that are uh, presented. In your view, or Channel 4's view, what are, what are those opportunities for you guys at this current time? Well, we we touched on it a, a bit, but I mean, obviously, I mean, the, the thing the thing seems to be that the the whole the sort of strength and depth of Channel 4's archive, particularly on on all four, um, which is having a huge appeal to young audiences, and I think we're this resurgence in young audiences that have been, dare I say it, maybe slightly leaning towards the s platform to kind of like, I suppose, recognising and, and understanding the value of the depth, strength and depth of the um, all four um, archive. There's this whole kind of like perspective of being a trusted place um, to go and view content, be that news content or archive content or even new content. It's fair to say that, you know, against other media that are suffering, such as cinema, um, outdoor, and to some extent, radio, um, television, and to, and to a certain extent, social seem to be the two emerging areas where there's, there's definite growth. But TV and broadcast VOD arguably is one of those most sort of trusted platforms. So, so we're hoping that we can build on that momentum when we come out of the, um, the COVID crisis. Well, let's hope the, um, the, 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 the all TV, all broadcast um, gets a loyalty bump, if you like, post COVID and people refined, if you like, the, uh, the um, TV and the services and the news that they have been missing in the past. Well, look, thank you very much, Jonathan. We covered a lot of ground with that. I really appreciate your time. I'd just like to uh, give you a virtual round of applause um, for your efforts <laughs> at this interview. So thank you very much, Jonathan. That's a great way to end our chat. I too very much hope Trusted Media continues to enjoy the viewing bump it is currently experiencing as we come out of this. Once again, thank you for your time and your expertise today, Jonathan.